where's the quote? And it's like, like the quote is click here. It's quite clearly, it's in blue, click here for your quote. Where's the quote? I don't see it. It's not attached. But, but interesting, do you, because I always put click here for quote. I, as in, yeah. I was just saying click here. I actually yeah. click here for quote. But I know some people just say click here. Um, so I suppose maybe it's streamlining that. Some, um, I used to put the job number on it. I, well, I always have the job number in the subject, but I used to put the job number in the quote. But now I just say click here for quote or click here to approve the order. Um, but yeah, or I would say like click on the link below to view the good to, to, to see. And what do you call the link then? Oh, I, I actually call the link exactly what is on the subject. It's exactly what is on the, so yeah, the address LinkedIn, bar. LinkedIn, the, the quote number, and then the, you know, what it is, let's say the swag or whatever, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what we were saying here was that, um, you know, we're, we're sending a lot by email. So, um, and you've seen the quote, the way our quote is done, and it's just, here's the product from them. But it's to make the email more, um, like, I would never have sent testimonials to a client. I, I think like they've dealt with us. I don't That's think it's, it. it's not like, I mean, it, it would be like me sending a testimonial through to Wayfair. They've given us a testimonial. They, no, but you don't Wayfair because Wayfair have already given us, yeah. like it's, it's the new client you'd be sending. Yeah. You wouldn't send a testimonial to, to Wayfair because they're already yeah, yeah. with us. But it's, yeah. But a lot of like, I mean, a lot of the new customers, for me, have been referrals. So it's been a, like a big thank you for, for your quote request and much appreciated. So it's like the, the contact has already been there. We've been on the phone. We've had the conversation. So, I mean, I, I think, yeah, you could put the testimonial in it, but are they going to read it? Some will, some won't. Yeah, but I suppose it's, it's yeah. you know, you're putting it in and it's it's not necessarily the testimonials, but it's, mm. you know, it's, it's more, I suppose, than just saying, here's your quote. Come back yeah to any questions yeah well i don't think anyone just here's your quote thanks a million goodbye yeah. <laughs> i think everyone like everyone personalizes their email um as as based on the conversation that they've had but maybe that's the way because in a lot of my emails i i might just like had the conversation but I, I i might just say you know thanks to the inquiry and here's the quote and let me know if you've any queries so I'm, we have to remember so it's i need to do that for me as well because i'm mm. I'm not doing that in a lot of cases whereby, you know, you know, this is what I picked up from our conversation and this is why we've chosen the products we've chosen. Yeah. Which I'm not doing on email and I probably should be. Yeah. Mm. So you, what the, whole, the whole idea is that we stand out from our competitors as I see it. So mm. you can say, okay, well, you get a referral in from a client. There's nothing to say that they don't have a policy where they have to go to three other people. Um, they're going to be comparing us to somebody. So how do we make our quotation and stand out and make it make us be the ones that they want to deal with? Yeah. Who to. looks, Richard? Um, well, as, as I was told, I have a voice for the radio. I, said that. <laughs> I have a face for the radio, too. <laughs> well, maybe you should be sending them some audio. So, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. there was a, there was a long long conversation after that so obviously I'm, obviously it was i'm not saying that every single part of this needs to go into because yeah. like, some of your quotes are for a thousand euro right you yeah. have to decide where you need to really make that wow right because those other yeah. quotes that i've seen and and there's a hundred grand of business in there and if you send them here's a quote da, 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 thanks a million it's like wow you know they don't really sound too hungry for this business are they going to be like that in in the operations side of it you know and they want to feel that um that that, that this is an organization that really gets them that really is going to make sure that this hundred grand will be spent really really well and they'll get what they need to to get from it that's, and they will look yeah that's a good point kira because i i suppose it's you know the, the kind of the main the day-to-day -day stuff we probably don't really need to put in all this effort but for the ones where we're where we're creating a powerpoint presentation or we're trying to sell them something new or upgrade them upsell them to a bigger process that's kind of what you're looking at yeah and if you do if you know some clients need reassurance and they want to know why did you choose this for me because you you guys are you know you're 
searching the world for the best type of products you're saving them all that time and they want to know you know then you're elevating yourself to be the more of that consultant rather than just a, a supplier right and you'll find if if you are feeling that these are you're just sending a quote and you don't need to prove it or you know why that you think this will work for them or you don't need to prove and um, show social proof which is what most people look for you you you, you know you you rarely go for to a hotel without looking for some social proof without reading reviews that's just the way that we are now right and your clients and um, that's how they make decisions also so it's dangerous to assume that they don't need any kind of a, a testimonial um, but again, you don't need to put that in um, for a quote that's for a thousand euro, you know, um, but if you're going out, you, you know, you need every client, every company needs new clients, every company needs growth. There's a lot of clients out there looking for new partners and, um, and, and there's a, a little bit more effort that needs to go into those type of clients. Okay. Okay, so let's look at um, at, at, at three proposed um, P's. So personality and passion. Um, price, not making it all about price and how do we uh, talk about an experience or the investment and personalization. Because they, they, they want to feel that you put some effort into this and that you've put some thought and this is the right fit for their business, okay? So the better quality questions that you ask, the better quality answers you are going to get, okay? And again, it's about elevating yourself to that partner status instead of being seen as a supplier. And, you know, if, if it is that um, you're seen as a supplier, they just see it as a commodity, you will find yourself in this conversation all about budget, about price and, you know, negotiating over one, one euro, right? And you want to get past that because they believe you have their best interests at heart and this is the right fit for their business, okay? So I wanna give you um, an example here of um, a proposal that we redid um, in, in November, right? So this was the first part of it. Visually, it looks great, um, but straight away, you know, the next slide is that what is Wed Pro? So this is a software company, right? And, um, and really what it feels like more is a PowerPoint presentation. It didn't feel like a proposal and there's no level of personalization. So we changed it, right? Um, and we had the conversation with the client and, um, and this could be your email. This could just as easily be your, your, your email. And we identified the four main areas that they needed to, to, to get right and to, to work with this company. Better quality leads, increasing average spend per wedding, an improved conversion rate, and driving midweek business, okay? Happy to say we can help you do all of this. And within the proposal, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And um, again, it's this is the next step. We're following up on Zoom, December 13th at 10.30 a.m. OK, so again, it's quick, it's to the point, but the client is nodding, reading this going, yeah, that's exactly what I said is important. OK, so as opposed to this, this is another client was a hotel client and this was a standard wording. They just changed the name um, uh, to each client and they sent all of this. Now, does this feel personalized? How do you feel when you when you get this? Um, you know, that's too long now. It's too long, isn't it? It's just like, and actually, as you said, the bullet points, the, you know, from a scanning of the other one. Was yeah. Like yeah. Like here you just feel, oh, you know, they didn't write all that just for you. And and they literally just changed the client's name and the dates. Right. So, um, you know, so you can see here, these are some of the like this is 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 good in terms of it's short and it's quick and it's to the point. Right. But we can personalize it a little bit more. OK. And um, and, you know, quotation three, nine, three, one, five doesn't mean that much to the client. So can we um, you know, can we personalize that another another little bit? Right. So these are examples of the kind of information that you receive from the client. Right. And it. 
again, you don't get much information, so it can be hard to, to personalize that. So that's why we need to dig another little bit, okay? So they gave you the phone number, which is great, and they did ask to send it by email, which is, which is fine too. Everybody wants to receive stuff by email, but there's nothing wrong with picking up the phone and say, look, Sonia, I want to make sure that I send you, you know, we've loads of options. I want to make sure I send you the, the, the right products for, for your needs. Um, I have a few questions. Um, you know, can we jump on a call for 15 minutes? or else you just call her direct okay because it's great you have her phone number okay um and or or maybe you're sending um you can send something something like this you know i received your inquiry for your branded coffee mugs i'm happy to work that out for you as we have so many options i want to ensure i send you exactly what you need um can I, can we jump on a call right so that's maybe if she didn't share her phone number right again you're just trying to to open up the conversation um with 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 Sonia okay so y Yvonne here with 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 Limerick City um you know again very minimum right but she's with the business improvement um department um I don't know did, have you worked with Limerick before yeah yeah yeah. So, um, so you know, let's, let's. We're not getting all the business, and the fact that she said morning is that she sent it to a shitload of people. She yeah. didn't say morning, Alona, or morning. You know, she just sent it morning, which is always a uh, I've sent it to a load of people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, so that could be a scenario where um, we need to to dig a little deeper and um, we need to go into um, her, her, her website. So let's say you don't know, um, let's say you don't know um, Limerick, right? Um, Limerick.ie, you haven't worked with the county council. So we go on their website real quick. Um, she said she worked at the business um, department, so we click in there. Then we're, we're, what we're trying to find out is, you know, is sustainability important or what is important to them? Um, so we're clicking in here, why Limerick? And we go down here and we see it's a green city and they're all about environmentally sustainable and creating a carbon neutral environment, right? So that's great information for us to quickly put into the email, I've noticed that your, your, your goals of environmentally sustainable, carbon neutral, that's why I'm suggesting our sustainable products. We have gone, um, you know, we have gone carbon neutral or we, we've we've changed our, our, our policies too, okay? And so again, you can show them that you get them and that you're aligning to what their needs are, okay? And you know, that took two minutes, okay? Um, so the first paragraph, ideally, is, is a little bit of a summary uh, of your conversation when they told you what was important to their success. And immediately you're making the proposal about them. Right. A lot of companies put the first paragraph of a proposal as a, you know, a, a, all about their company and tell them all about ASA marketing and all the rest. And the client, they may not care too much. Um, and it's 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 a little bit like that first date part, right? Where if you're talking, doing all the talking, and you're talking all about yourself, they're not feeling that you're that interested in them. So you're making the first part of the proposal about them. You're showing immediately that you're client centric, right? And you've their interests at heart, right? So we want to focus on the results that you deliver, and we're using the client's language and the answers that you, they gave you in the killer questions, okay? And we're going to do a little bit of practice on this um, today. So maybe it's, dear Christine, I really enjoyed learning more about your business. From our conversation, I understand that the following is important for you to achieve from our work together. And again, um, you know, maybe it is you don't need to do this for your 1,000 um, euro quote, but for your you know, Michelle and Caroline, you decide what's important, your 10 grand plus, whatever, whatever it is. But this takes two minutes at the same time. So maybe you've had an amazing conversation with this client and this might be some of the outcomes that they shared, that they want to help the staff feel appreciated or that feel new, new members feel part of the company and feel that connection. Or maybe um, you get the they want to get the team excited to come back to the office, right? Maybe they want to connect with customers um, because they've no reps on the roads. Uh, maybe they need the product to help them launch a sustainable 
um, their new sustainable product, right? Or their new service. Um, maybe they need you to help wow some particular department um, and they want to make their processes uh, stress-free and within the budget. I'm not saying to write all of these in an email, but I was just coming up with some examples of what you might hear from clients when you're asking killer questions, okay? And most of these I took from our work on the problems um, uh, brainstorm that we did the first day on Padlet, okay? So you're saying, look, I'm happy to say we can help you achieve this. And in this proposal, I wanna show you how I can help you achieve this success. And then you're establishing next steps as agreed. We we'll speak next Monday at, at 10 a.m., okay? And that establishing next steps is important because has it ever happened to you that you don't hear back from a client, that you've sent them a proposal, you put two hours or three hours into researching it, and then you just don't hear back from them. And it's just like, oh, you wasted your time, right? So that's why getting that next meeting um, established with them ideally is, um, ideally is important, okay? Am I going at an okay pace for everybody? Yeah? Okay, so if you want to take a screenshot of this, because I'm going to ask you to do this for um, as our practice in a, in a few minutes, okay? Or take a photo of it. This is what you're going to be doing as the assignment, okay? You got it? No, I can't do it for no. my laptop. Have you got your phone there, Patricia? Just take a photo. I'll screenshot and send it to you, Trish. Does anybody else need it? She got it. You got it, yeah? I sent it to you anyway as well on chat. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're addressing their hot buttons and what's important to them. Um, and again, in the body of it. Now, you won't need to, to do this for every quote, but I'm giving you um, a, a really good example here of how to personalize it easily. So, um, so you know, maybe your heading is how you're helping your the staff to feel appreciated. We've identified a few options, and Im immediately you're making it visual. And this does this feel like you know you're consulting here, and you're really you know personalizing it. And these are my suggestions, right? And again, really, really visual how we can help um, your staff feel part of the company and connected, right? And these are your suggestions, okay? How we can help your staff to feel excited to come back to the office, because a plan to plant gives out fresh air, right? Plenty of oxygen. So they all have a plan to come back to the office and they have a lovely bag for carrying the laptop and arriving in style, right? Whatever that might be. These are just a few ideas. You guys will be creative in this area as well, okay? Um, and these are your ideas, how you can help feel a connection with the client when they've no reps on the road. But the point is here, you see that those are the words of the client. They've said, we need to, uh, you know, get it connected with our clients because we've no reps on the road. And those are the words of your clients. So you're putting them into the proposal so they can see, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, um, this is why they're suggesting them. I like it right uh, but it immediately feels personalized okay people love to doodle when they're on a zoom meeting with you or whatever that might be right and this is your ideas as to how you can help them to launch their sustainable product whatever that might be okay so again it just took a few minutes to do this because you're taking those key phrases that the client gave you and uh, but it immediately has a bigger impact on the client because it feels that you that you really took the time to think this through and these are the right um, options for them but most of all you're positioning yourself as that trusted advisor right as that consultant as that partner instead of the supplier okay So a little bit of proof, right? I love to put a photograph because again, people identify, it makes it visual. And um, and Kara said this, she's seen more financial success with the figures. She said, I think it's from asking killer questions and using emotive language 
in the proposals as proof I truly heard them, right? People want to feel that you get them and they feel heard because it's very respectful, okay? And I would put it in the training website, some wording as to how to get some um, testimonials that, um, that show the results, that show the impact that, 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 um, that, that you have, okay? So let's move on to the, the pricing part of it. And again, you're great at this because you give them options and you give them some upgraded options, but maybe tell me why um, that upgrade is, is, is worth it. You know, why is that worth 12 euro as opposed to the other example you've given me that's seven euro, okay? Um, and again, you're being that consultant, you're advising me uh, on this. Or maybe, you know, maybe you're verbally talking the client through this that you've got a proposal walkthrough with them. and again you know this is for the larger pieces of of business um and you and you uh, ideally give your highest investment price first because if they're going to have like it's a bit more expensive than i thought moment you want that to be to your higher value product as opposed to your lower value product okay and it'll help you with um with negotiations as well okay so we're going to do a little practice where i'm going to be uh the marketing manager i'm going to be the client and you guys are going to ask me um some questions and uh, and uh, ideally here we're looking for those more emotional those strategic questions right you don't need to ask me about um volume how many people where is it going to you know none of those details you you were already good at that i want to get you practicing those killer, killer questions, questions to try and figure out more of the emotions behind the sale okay now does anybody want to take a break before we jump into this no I'm okay. No, everybody's feeling good? Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of time to come up with some questions by yourself first. And then um, <clears throat> we'll do the, um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get we, you right. We, we, we actually did this, uh, we did a, quite a lot, of covered quite a lot of this at our sales meeting last week on the, the killer mm -hmm. questions. Great. Fabulous. Um, but it didn't, I didn't get anything out of it as such because um, I felt like with me, with the killer questions, I didn't have them. I was moving. I felt we were all nearly at part two or three and not actually at those killer questions, but at the, at the, at the, the questions that we were asking was, as you've just mentioned there, you know, the lead time, delivery, budget, yeah. blah, blah, you know, yeah. you know. Yeah, but they're the normal questions that you ask, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. you would ask them in step two. Yes. You would start with some of your um, more emotional killer questions, the strategic ones, to figure out like, okay, why why do they want to spend 50,000 on this? What do they want this product to do? How do you want people to feel once they receive this, you know? Um, I understand that you, you need to, to have um, ask, ask a certain amount of those technical questions, uh, but you would start with asking more of the emotional questions uh, in order to figure out uh, why are they doing this, you know, they, they didn't just wake up and decide to spend 50 grand on, on these products, there's a reason, right? And the more you know that, the, the better you can um, help them and suggest the right kind of products, okay? And it'll really help you to stand out from your, from your competitors, okay? So is, is, is that just not sitting well with you, Patricia? I, I suppose I've never, <clears throat> it's something I've never come across before, you know, so it's all very new to me because, um, you know, I've been so used to dealing with just the, the one client um, for, well, apart from the last two years, um, and they came to me and they knew exactly, like, not, not that, but like, we would go back to them with a choice, but we never actually went back with killer questions. Yeah. Like, our questions were more specs or the information that they weren't giving us, you yeah. know? Yeah or yeah, their yeah. budget or you know what event or what kind of event is it but yeah. I never had anything of the questions before that if you know what I mean you know like I I've never come across it before like I was buying a car a couple of weeks ago 
I, I went to three different dealers. I didn't have any killer questions thrown at me either by, by these dealers, you know? So that's why I'm just trying to get my head around it all, you know? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of garages out there that could definitely do with some training because I've had mm -hmm. men assume that I want a certain car. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's not what I want because they wanted to sell me that car. Um, but, you know, absolutely, Patricia, this is something new and that's why we're doing it, right? Because we need to stand out, because we need to do something different, because your clients have changed. Uh, because the marketplace has changed and we want to make sure that, uh, you know, what, what, what worked in 2019 isn't necessarily going to work uh, right now. Your, your, your clients have changed the way that they are buying, right? They are a lot more particular about where they spend their money. Everything has been evaluated an awful lot more. And you want to make sure that when they're going into a meeting, that they have ASA as um, this is the company I want to work for, right? Or I want to work with on this because they have to sell you internally, okay? And they want to make sure like, because they're putting their reputation on the line, right? If it goes wrong, if they choose the wrong product, somebody's going to say, who chose this? What, you know, why was this? This isn't in line with, you know, our policy um, or this doesn't look good enough for our clients. It doesn't have the impact that we needed to have, okay? And the more knowledge that you have on the client on why they want to invest this money, the better you can help them, okay? And the more it's gonna help um, um, your, yourselves also to, 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 to win new business, to make sure that your LinkedIn and your Facebook don't start questioning why are we only working with ASA okay because that could easily come up right and they you want to make sure that your contact there is 100 you know ASA they have our back they know exactly what we need and they help us deliver what we need to deliver every time that that 200 grand that 100 grand is money really really well spent okay and this is going to help them to to, to do that Okay, and you're 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 creating more of a connection with the client, right? That they're able to that, that if you're able to to make more of that connection, that you're able to figure out more of the emotions behind the sale, that is helping you to stand out in their mind to be the company that they want to work with. Okay, and it's helping you to build that relationship even more with them. Okay. So until you try this, until you do something different, you're not going to see the difference that it makes, okay? So I'm asking you to, to go with it, to, 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 to be brave, and we're in a safe environment right now, and so we can do some practice, okay, guys? So this, I'm a marketing manager, okay? So multinational or Euro European company. I'm looking for some alternatives to their notebook range, um, I, we want some, um, some swag for, for visiting UK uh, clients. We, I know we definitely want 100 water bottles, but we're also looking for some ideas on other swag, okay? And I want you to fill it in, um, the, the, the quotation in the uh, attached spreadsheet as well, okay? I want you to spend some time thinking about what are the questions you're going to ask me. And then um, I'm going to ask you to, to ask me the questions and I'll give you the best answers I can. And you're going to observe what, what my wording is and what phrases am I using, okay? Is everybody okay on that? Mm -hmm. So how many questions would you like? Well, I, I want everybody to ask me one question. So you need to listen to what the other people are saying. Um, and if they ask your question, you need to have another question ready. Okay. Don't ask the same question. So, you know, if you come up with three or four questions, 
It should be good. So imagine I sent this in as an email and you're calling me up to ask me some killer questions. And again, I don't don't ask me how many do you need and all those other technical details. I know you're really great at that. So does somebody just, do we just jump in or? No, I, I, I'll give you a few minutes to, to just write them down. Okay. So you can just let me know when you have your questions. Richard is done. Michelle is good. Lona done, good. You're okay, Grania? If you need more time, that's no problem. I know this is really new for a lot of you. Lana, I know you're going to ask me some really killer questions. Do you have um, the sheet that I did out um, in, in, in your training website? Do you have that beside you? Or I gave you some killer questions. That might help prompt you if you're, if you're feeling stuck. Not the rain is here now. <laughs> yeah, lashing here. Did you get to have a look at that, uh, Patricia? You're on. You're on mute there. Sorry, what are you asking, Kira? Sorry. I put a suggested killer questions in the training website. That's what we spoke about at the sales meeting last week. That's yeah. where we're only all getting up, you know, not the killer questions, but the the the, 
to part two or three. Yeah, that's part two. So I had a number of questions in there, but if you, if you ask some of them to me now, they'd be great examples. Okay. Carolina, how are you feeling? Are you good? Yes. Good. I, can can yeah. I just a quick question? Um, Absolutely. I haven't seen those kill, the those examples of killer questions. Where are they exactly? In step two, in, step in, two. In, under killer questions in the training website. I think it's called suggested killer questions. Kira's website is down the and I sent you an email yesterday um, and I had a, the link in there and I had the three documents listed that I put up there two weeks ago. Definitely, the, I had printed it out and was talking through it at the sales meeting last week, Carolina, but you may not have actually seen it. You know, I, it was a, a, quite a colourful document, actually. Um, it was great. If you, if you go down the menu on the left hand side once you're logged in and go to, to to the killer questions and then you'll see the killer question checklist and when you click on that you get you can download it yeah so that, it's a really helpful document and it'll really help, help you here lana how are you i'll email it to carolina so just just a quick so in the step two the only file to download it's killer questions step three is that what we are talking about that's one of them. There should be another. Well, so there's only one in here for me. There's nothing. There's only one document. Under step two, it has killer questions, the power of asking the right questions, the killer question checklist, and the recording of our live workshop on killer questions. I actually, I never even noticed that menu button until no. just now, Carlene. I was going along the next 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 oh so i don't know why it's going to the menu because it's all that in speeds that yep. speeds it up yeah can you see that carolina yeah I, well i can see i can see that yeah like step two killer questions and there are like three lines the first one is the video then is that checklist and yeah so check, click, on the, click on the checklist and then you can download it to the right hand side it's killer underscore questions download oh it's on the downloads on the right hand side yeah. Yes, but I only have one document there. Should there be three no, documents? There's only one document to download. And it's step three. I have to still say step three. Yeah. yeah. That's what I have, Carolina. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's step three within point two, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, that is it's that's the one you download. The conversation frame is the heading when you open it. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I have yeah, that. You have it. Great. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, so so everybody has that, do they? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do now is we're we're at the time to take a break. Okay. So we'll take a break. Everybody, make sure you're comfortable. Have your cup of tea, whatever, and we'll come back in ten minutes. And you can ask me your killer questions, and um, and then you're going to. I can put you in pairs if you're more comfortable to do this in pairs, and you can do it in breakout rooms. And I just want you to come up with the first paragraph of a proposal, okay? So I'll put you in 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 pairs. The most important thing is that you're you're you know asking a question and you're and you're listening and you're writing down some of my words. But right? are we better to do it with everyone so that we can all hear the questions? Oh, everybody, yes, you'll do it. I'm the client. Everybody will ask a question. All of us in 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 this as we are now, and then. To write the first paragraph oh, right. in pairs, right? So be more comfortable that that way because I know it's brand new, yeah. and it's it's a lot to to take on, but um, it, it it'll be more comfortable doing it in pairs. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, it's like it's like learning learning how to do something for the first time. Yeah. you know, and think about it differently. So it's yeah. definitely a challenge. Yeah, it is. It is. And you'll all be wrecked come 1230 because you've used <laughs> your brain so much. <laughs> but don't worry, you're in a comfortable and a safe space here. OK, and 
that's it. That's why practicing it now will will help you. Um, and the more you do it, the better you're going to get at this. Okay. And we can have another session on it, no problem. Um, if if um if if that will help everybody to be more comfortable. Okay. So it's um so it's eleven thirty four now. So if we come back in uh in ten minutes, yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good. See you in a bit. My video isn't working. Caroline, is it? Yeah, I'll just, I'll log, I'll leave and come back. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Got gremlins. Maybe it's this link with Zoom. I've done loads of webinars in the last two weeks and I've never had that going blank problem. <laughs> so um, maybe I need a new link. You're on mute, Michelle. I just realized, um, are you uh, are, are you using the same link for each of our sessions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe it's to update the link, yeah. I don't know, it's weird. I don't know. I, I have, um, I had an update on the laptop this morning, uh, a Windows update. So normally oh. I'd, I'd, normally I'd push it out till the end of the day, but I, I had fears that it was going to freeze during this. So I said, fake it, I'll, I'll bite the bullet and do take the 15 minutes to do the update this morning. So. Well, you know, that has come up. Um, Windows want to update to Windows 11, but like this is a new laptop. It's like less than two years old. Um, but my IT guy said to avoid updating for whatever reason. Yeah, and I know that I've I've lost camera when I updated, and yeah, it, it the wind the updates yeah. definitely throw stuff off. Yeah. Well, if I don't update, I find that like the last time I was asked for an update, I didn't, and it just started running really slow. And after a few hours, I had to update it. It just it was running very very yeah. la laggy. I might have to give in. It's telling me something anyway, for sure. <laughs> okay, so Patricia, how are you feeling now? Are you comfortable with this? No, not this time, no. I'll be honest, no, I'm not feeling That's confident okay. at all. That's okay. That's okay. That's why we're practicing. But do you have a killer question? No, not yet. No. I've got questions, but it's not a killer question. Okay. Okay. And did you look at that list? That's, um, Sorry, can I? I'm going to just um, do not stir up with the the office phone, Michelle. That's fine. Yeah, yeah it's just it's um, not ringing here though, Trish. No, but this happens a lot. It rings on my phone first. Maybe you're the first one for the Dublin line. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. Oh yeah, here it is now. <laughs> <laughs> it's here now. Ilona, <laughs> what's the password for the Zoom meeting? It is. And the password is 147188. Can somebody put that in the chat there for her? 147188. You got very it. quick, Roger. <laughs> Okay, oh, we can see you, Ilona. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Yay, there's Ilona. So, um, Caroline, are you okay? It's funny because her, her picture was much bigger before the break. It was, when, yeah. When, yeah. And it's just a little icon now. Check. We've got two of her now. Oh no, two Caroline's in the room. Oh yeah, I just saw a text Sorry. there that her whole machine has Oh my gosh. You're back. Sorry, about that. Sorry, I have to listen to you through my phone, but I will watch you on the bigger screen. So. Okay. Yeah, if it's great. That computer doesn't like the... If it's easier for you, um, uh, you can type the questions, Ilona, but it seems to be working well right now. Okay. Okay. Okay, 
everyone, Kira's frozen and Trish is frozen on mine and Lana and Alona. <laughs> Storm is wrecking havoc. Yeah. <laughs> you're all, I think you're back now, yeah. Uh. Oh, my camera's gone now again. Okay, I think, look, we'll just get started. In between everybody, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, okay? Yeah. There's nothing on the line here, so take away any pressure you might feel, okay? We're just practicing in a safe environment, okay? So who who wants to go first? I don't mind going first, purely because okay. I only kind of have one question. I'm kind of like Trish, I kind of struggles with this. That's okay. So I just want to get my one out of the way in case someone else has it. Okay. <laughs> smart, smart move. <laughs> um, okay, so, okay, I'll try it. Um, you mentioned you're looking to for alternatives, alternative notebooks and other swag. So would you be interested in looking at sustainable items for this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're very interested in, in that um, the company has taken a move towards uh, carbon neutral and more environmentally friendly. So, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And does that um, is that right across all your offices? It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a company wide policy and it's something that they put an awful lot of work into in the last two years. Um, what sort also, of reaction would you like to? Yes, Alona, you go. Uh, uh, what sort of reaction would you like to receive from your colleagues? Reaction, is it? Yeah. Ooh, great question. Um, do you know, like you, say, you said you're going to send yet for swag store. So what kind of reaction would you like? Yeah, for, for to get out of them. Because uh, the UK is a new market uh, for us. So we really want it to be like a wow factor. Uh, we want the, it to to help us to stand out and for people to immediately feel they've they've gone to a lot of effort uh, in doing in doing this and that, you know, people feel important when they receive that, uh, because we want um, we want to be able to have, um, you know, more conversations and for it to 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 make it easier for our sales rep to uh, to, to to visit the offices to feel welcome and for them to want to have conversations. Also, Kerry, you were saying that um, you were looking for um, items for your visit to the UK office. Would um, UK manufactured items be of any interest to you? Uh, it, it probably would be, yes, in terms of the impact that would have on them, um, you know, that they would um, appreciate buying British and something that was made in Britain. So, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, can I ask, um, Kira, who are you giving the gifts to? So are they going, are you giving them in person? Are you planning to post them? Are they going to clients? Are they going to your team? Who are you planning to give the gifts to? Yeah, so there's a, a, a few different options here. So the UK office is for um, helping us to, to launch in the UK market. So that is for, for, for those clients. Um, the, the water bottles are for internally for our team. We want to send them to uh, to the team that some of them are working remotely, some of them are in the office, but a lot of them remotely. And um, and and the notebooks is is a mix. The notebooks would be for uh, for sending to to clients um, around around Europe. It's not not just um, not just locally, and um, and some some of our team members. So let's say for new new team members, that we'd like them to have um, some swag or something from the from the company. Also, Kira, there you were um, looking for ideas for other swag. Um, is this something that you are personally looking after, or is this something that you and your team are looking after? And have you had any ideas? Have you spoken, sat down, and discussed to what it is that you might be looking for? Uh, no, I, well, I really would appreciate your your guidance on that. Um, you know, I suppose the water bottles and the coffee mugs are kind of standard, and you know what what is is new that might help us to stand out a little bit 
uh, in particular for, 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 for clients. Um, so I'm not sure what, you know, what, what is available. Is it, you know, new types of chargers? Is it a, a, um, something to wear? Um, you know, like we, we have fairly casual in, environment here. We love the whole kind of t-shirt uh, look. Um, and I think maybe coming into the winter, some of the, the sleeveless vests, um, I'd like to see some options on, on, on something to wear, but then something to, that, that they have um, also like for the desk area. So you say this is for your clients, it's not for your internal team. This is something you want to give to your clients? For, for the new ideas, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to ask a question? I did have a question, but it, it isn't really relevant to this conversation the way that it's it's gone gone on. Uh, but just perhaps a suggestion would be: Are you celebrating or recognizing something in particular? No, not in particular. No. Yeah. yeah. That was a very quick no. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank God. You're going to get that. You're going to get that. <laughs> but that's why you need a few different questions so that you're able to go in the direction that the conversation is 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 going in for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, th this is my day to day, so I could go on for days talking to you. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Carolina, did you have a question? Um. I'm not sure if this was already asked or not, but um, what what would you like uh, those branded products to to say about your company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That 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 is a good one. Um, we want them to say that that we're a company that's innovative, that's creative, and that we're very aware of um of being kind to the planet okay. trisha i know you have a question there i already um, asked one ages ago i asked the second question <laughs> about your offices yeah have you another one for me or Lana? Not, really, not at the moment, no. No problem. Lana, you're on mute there. Yes, that's because I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not going to give me a killer question. I'm, I know you have them in you. I know you have them in you. None today, is it? Uh, no, just okay. so. Does everybody feel that they have enough information? Well, <laughs> oh yeah, you go, Gronia. Um, so you mentioned you're looking for a wow factor and also sustainable products. Can I ask if budget is important on this process project? Yeah, but budget is definitely always always important. Um, but I understand for a wow factor that you're not going to get that by sending the cheapest thing uh but yes there, there is there is a budget and my finance department will be looking um will be looking at this for sure yeah okay so we can ask about budget in these killer questions then can we because i thought that would have been the next stage uh, you can ask towards the end but you couldn't start yeah, no, it's very, it's very important to discuss budget for sure, Patricia. Yes, right, okay. um, but I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't make it my first question no, because no. then you know that's the conversation is just going to be all about that. Yeah, well, like Ron, you come in because like, but I would have thought like you would want to know about the budget before you start talking about the different options that we can offer or that what you're trying, what your company is trying to portray or you know to show. Would we not be better to know about the, the budget before we start going deeper and deeper and deeper? Now, I could have, I'd probably have that totally ass ways, you know? 
No, not at all. It's very important that you ask that and you bring up some really important points there, Patricia. But, yeah. you, you know, you said you said there that you wanted to know um, what way the company um, wanted to go with this. Uh, so, you know, a way to find out that is to ask me, look, what, what is the impact you want this to make? What do you want people to say? Right. Um, and it's important, I feel, that you know that before you know um, a, a budget in order to uh, to be able to, um, to 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 give them some some decent options you know that you'll have a budget option on it or you'll have a more up, upgraded option on it like if they want you know to have a, for everybody to say oh wow this is amazing it's the best gift I've ever got and they tell you they've you know four euro per person um, then that's not realistic, right? And it's up to you then to educate them uh, on um, on the options that you have, and that they may not achieve the wow factor that they want with wow. that budget, right? Maybe they need to to go back to their finance department and say, "Look, we weren't realistic thinking we could do this for four euro. You know, this is what we can do for four euro." But but this so is this is what I really that want. Actually, that happens regularly, Kira. <laughs> Welcome to our world, yeah. yeah I, want a Fer- I want like a Ferrari, that. but I've only money for like BMW. Phrase. I like yeah. that phrase, you may not achieve what you want within yeah. your budget. Um, yeah. It's a nice way of saying we need more money. Yeah. yeah. Like I have a quote at the moment, okay, well, it should have been gone to an order, it should have gone to an order at 10 o'clock this morning, but they had a budget of 500 euro and they wanted um, a a gift for 300 people. So, you know, I went in at the the cheapest options and they still didn't like them and they wanted a nice notebook. Now, I eventually got it, but it was very, it's just really going to be fairly cheapy, a very cheapy yeah, you know, but that's what we're up against every day. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But but then I think it's up to you to advise them on that. You say you, you may not get that, that wow factor that you want. This yeah. is, you know, it costs X amount of money. It will feel very different to the one that I'm really would love you to, or I really think will help you achieve that, you know, which is the cork one at whatever six euro, you know. Yeah. And then yeah. if you've advised them and you've yeah. given them that option. But yeah, I knew they couldn't go any higher than 500 euro. Yeah. But you see, I think I think by offering it sometimes, Trish, you know, they, the, the person that you're dealing with can see that you've gone to a huge effort and you've given them what it was, is within their budget. You've really tried your best, it, but it's not going to create what they want. So they may actually go for the more expensive one, but you've yeah. given her both options and you've... So I think it could work out in your favor. Now, depending on the company, but sometimes the budget is just someone says, oh, we're going to spend 500 euro. But if they have a reason to go back to the finance person and say, well, look, if we spend 700 euro, look at what we can get instead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That you don't want to do brand damage, you know, by not spending that extra 200, you know, and you, you want to educate and you want to arm that person that you're speaking with, with lots that they can go back. <laughs> They, they have to do that, that that conversation. They have to do that argument for you. So you need to equip them to have that conversation as to why they feel they really need to spend that 700 euro and all of a sudden they might find it, you know? Yeah. Um, and and that, will, that will always happen. Um, you know, um, people will try to, to, a lot will try to get it for the cheapest as possible. But when once you understand what they want to achieve from it, then you have the power to say, look, you said that you really wanted to achieve this from it. I, I, I don't think that you will by, you know, giving people a two euro notebook, but I think you will get that wow factor and you're in alignment with your sustainability policy or the client sustainability policy if you offer the cork note or whatever that might be. So asking the killer questions beforehand gives you that knowledge where you can advise them on the best product for um, the, 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 the wishes, their outcome, and then the, to, to fit within a budget, you know? And then not every client- So this is why- yeah. Yes, Alona. So, sorry. So this is why I kind of understand, uh, I want to ask the same what Trish said. So that questions of Gronia was great, but 
she, like for me, it sounded like the next step because she used your words. Like you told me that you want to get the wow, wow factor. So wouldn't be her that questions which Gronia asked the the next step, not now the killer between the killer questions. Step three. And yeah. Right. So this what was uh, actually I think three questions that you know uh, that she asked about the budget, but yeah. she asked about budget. <laughs> using your words like you know that she showed you that she was listening to you yeah. um, to understand so th this is why it's kind of confused and I understand Trish because I, I got kind of a little bit confused too by these questions but I'm not saying that question was great from Gronia yeah. just you know think... the moment of no I understand so that's why I said thanks to Gronia for actually asking the question because it is I'm quite confused as to where you ask the questions, where your step, your killer questions, then you move on to your stage two, Trish. Your stage three. Yeah. There, there's yeah. Trish, there's no real, there's no real law to it. Basically, they say there's there's three steps, three simple steps to selling. Stage one is personal. So you get make it personal, you converse with the person and you get to know the person. Then stage two is gathering information. So you gather all the information that you need. And then the third step is down to business. It's not as quite as finalized as that, but it's discussing budget, quantities, how much you're looking for, pricing and stuff like that. Yeah. So yes. Like, so this is why, like, we were on the stage two. Yeah. But there's, there's no law. But there's nothing wrong with using my words in stage two. The big difference between step two and step three is that right now you're not selling in step two. You're not telling me all about the products. You're still gathering information. You're still figuring out what's important to me, you know? So absolutely no harm in using my words because it's a conversation. I feel listened to, you know, the whole way through, right? Uh, but the, the difference mm -hmm. is that Grania hasn't launched into telling me all about the products because you're still listening to me I'm still doing the talking, you're still gathering important information in order for you to be able to suggest and advise um, in step three, what you feel is the right fit. And what are your needs, what are your you, requirements? Just on that, Kira, where you said budget is important. So like you might have a budget of 50,000, whereas in my head, you have a budget of 5,000. So where, at what stage do you say, you know, because I, I would often say to clients when I'm asking about budget, you know, I, you know, it's like, do you have a budget in mind before, you know, I go nuts. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. you know, no. and suggest all the amazing expensive items if you only have a small budget. So I suppose yeah. where do you where do you ask them? Because there's a big difference. And from, you know, from Trisha's point about that they only have 500 that's on their PO and that's what they have to get yeah. versus somebody who doesn't have they have a budget but they don't really like i'm talking to bnp and she doesn't really have a budget um she just take it if she likes it but she doesn't want to go crazy on the money like we quoted some yeah. stuff and she's like i think that you know was 30 quid ahead that's probably a bit too much but she's happy to spend 20 versus yeah. i only have 500 so where where do you ask that money question without because we don't we we need to know before we go off on a tangent and suggest loads of stuff and they go yeah. jesus i'm not paying 20 quid for a charger i've only a fiver yeah yeah so I, I would say towards that end of, of, of step two, um, you know, when you're, you, you, you've figured out a lot of the emotive stuff uh, behind it. And yes, you're, you're getting down to what the budget is. And you say, look, have you an idea per person what you want this, you know, what, what you have? Or do you have a, a PO? Do you have, you know, a certain amount that, you know, so it's important to be able to ask, ask those questions uh, too, to help, help you. Um, and, and maybe that's a good way to, to lead into it. Say, look, we have loads of options in notebooks we could we have suggested notebooks for 30 euro or, or notebooks for five euro you know do you have where would you fit on that range right yeah right. and and then you're 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 um you're, you're getting it out of them what they, what they feel is um or where, where their budget is um and 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 then like in step three you said look this we give you the wow factor, right? This is the 20 euro one. Um, but we also have another good option at, at six euro. 
Um, it, it won't give you the sustainability the, 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 that you asked for, but it will give you this, right? And that's where your knowledge of, of your products uh, really comes into play, right? But okay. they have to have feel listened to and have talked about something more than budget in mm -hmm. order for you to be able to match, right? Because you're getting all, they're gathering all that information in the step two and you want to figure out why they want to spend 500 euro, why they want to spend 50,000. What does it want them to do? What does it want to say? You know, you, you ask that mm -hmm. great question. What does it want to, you want it to say? What's the problem you want it to fix? Right. Well, I can't fix it for 500 euro, but I can fix it for a thousand euro or for 10,000 euro, whatever that might be, you know. Can I but, just give you a little example there? Because I had a call with Trend Micro last week and she needed some promotional items. She said to me, I have a budget of 4,000 euro. And this was after a couple of questions. Right. And then as the conversation went on and we were talking about other pain points and other things that she was trying to solve in the end. She was like, OK, I have 4,000 euro right now, but I have a much bigger budget potentially for the other stuff. So it was kind of right. so even from Trisha's point of view where, yes, OK, we only have 500 for this particular project, but I would next month I'll have X yeah. or Y or I can build it in to the plan or the budget for two months time. Or yeah. So I don't think it's a waste to ask the questions at this stage. And I think, yeah, yeah I, I, I think having like definitely having those questions, I was I was typing the questions as you were calling them out there, having them kind of in your armory that you can just call them out is. It's yeah. like, Michelle, I had a similar situation as well where I had a company and they had a budget and they're like, I need to use it. Today is Thursday and I need to use it by Friday. I was like, well, yeah. that's not going to happen. You're not going to pick product order by Friday. I said, what I can do is I can invoice you for the amount, issue a credit note, and then it'll take the pressure off you and you can choose in over the coming weeks to what, where you want to go and what avenue. Yeah. And they were like, oh my God, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, because they because they they realize they're coming up to their end of quarter and they yeah. haven't spent 10,000 or they haven't spent 5,000. Mm -hmm. And the way it works in a lot of companies, if they don't spend the money it's that's gone. allocated, it's gone. They lose it and they don't yeah. get it back ever. So they mm -hmm. always, there's sometimes there's a rush to spend it. Right. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe they don't have it this week. But when you're asking these questions, you're getting them to think. Sometimes they haven't thought this through. Maybe they haven't put that value with what you do with that product. It's like, God, actually, I need to have this conversation with another department. You know, they have the money for this and that would be really relevant to them, right? So you just never know. If you make assumptions and you're just sending them a quote and one option, then you don't know what you've left on the table. And you haven't perhaps served them to the best degree that you can serve them, right? And they're left, you know, um, still having a want that the next person who comes in and say, oh, well, we can do this. And, they, you know, they get them to think through things. They'll win the business, you know? Mm. So, well, I mean, I, I could have very easily given them, okay, there's 500 mugs for a thousand euros order now and you, and that's the budget gone but whereas taking the pressure off them and like look you need to decide what it is you want rather than me giving something to you in a hurry so she yeah. was completely yes i agree if you could do that that would be amazing so yeah and maybe they just have their their urgently need to get this done now and mm. um th they're you know not thinking it through you just say look I can I can meet your time requirements in this right now, but let's put up a call for two weeks time where we can talk through it more and I can really understand your needs and offer XXX, right? And and maybe that would be a really good outcome from some of, of those clients. Okay. They're just they're too much on a deadline right now, but maybe in two weeks I'd be like, yeah, that'd be great. I'd be able to talk through it. I'm interested in hearing about that in two weeks' time. OK, and you set that up as a calendar, um, a calendar appointment. You send them, you know, March 2nd at 10 a.m. We're going to have this conversation, whatever that might be. OK, 
cool very important that you ask that I, I i hope everybody um has 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 more clarity on that uh but i think it's it's really important that we had that conversation so well well done guys okay so i'm going to give you um 10 minutes i'll put you in pairs and then just um if I need to do it in any particular order, people working with, um, you know, Gronya and Richard, you work together, Caroline and Gronya. Uh, if there's any particular, uh, you know, order to put people in for um, for the breakout rooms, uh, I let me to mix it up. Mix it up. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to do it um, automatically. So whatever whatever way it is. And um, Lana, I know you don't do this all the time. But just you know, you've gone with it, and um, you've gone with it so far, and your input is really valuable. Okay. Good. So uh, I'll give you ten minutes, and I'll pop in if if you need some help. So one second before I do that, I'm just giving you a reminder of what we're looking for. Right? You're looking. I'm looking for you to write the first paragraph of the proposal. So you took the. Um, you took the uh, the photograph, the screenshot of, of of what I shared earlier. That's the kind of thing, right? The first paragraph was, you know, three or four bullet points, whatever that might. Be. Okay, everybody cool on that? Yeah, great. Okay. Richard, Elona is locked in twice. So is Elona yeah. here? Yeah, she's here and she's muted. Okay. Um, does the chat room work? Do you want to eat? eat um, you can use the chat room in the breakout room, right? Do you know what? I can go and get her from the other breakout room, the other Elona. <laughs> <laughs> Bring her back one. here. Okay. Alona, I'm going to move you to room four. A um, conversation frame. Gotcha. Kira, this meeting is being recorded. Are you doing okay in here? Yeah, we we just started now. Okay, right. So, okay. Yeah. So just look out for my phrases and my words. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. This meeting is okay, being recorded. So where the hell is that window gone? Are you okay in here, girls? Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Not too bad. Cool. Um, so just going to type up what you're saying, Lana, one second. Yeah. I forget. I try and pick the three or four bullet points that, you, that were most important. Yeah. So we'll be we starting with like, we kind of have like an opening. Joe, like, thank you for helping me get acquainted with your business. From our conversation, I understood the following. Like, should we start with that and then bullet points? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well done. I need to type this then because I'll forget. Um, okay, then, Lana, I have written.
Hi, Kara. This meeting is being recorded. Are you okay in here, girls? We are. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> um. Yep. Yeah. So go on, Trish. Sorry, I'm just. I'm. I'm taking. I'm writing in Trish's. No, no, I'm just trying to remember, Caroline, what it's all about. This meeting is being recorded. Sorry, we got oh. back there just because I got kicked out, so I don't think we got. We got <laughs> me. This meeting is being recorded. Most of it, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, how did that feel, folks? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. It's okay. Bob, good. I I thought it was really good. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm definitely going to start using it more. Good. Although until you tell us that we're our park off is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I thought it was good. Good, excellent. So, who wants to go first? One for myself and Richard, you go. Okay, Alona. Well, basically, yeah, myself and Alona just um, we were like general uh, basis, kind of based on an email sent back to you after our conversation was. Um, uh, dear Kira, it was a pleasure to have spoken to you. Upon listening to your conversation, I really enjoyed learning more about you, your company, and your team. Um, we are looking forward to wowing you all, um, and hopefully your clients, um, and uh, offer you the ability to go sustainable with your swag. Um, and then it was kind of... Um, I, I'm looking forward to sending over the quotes to see how you feel with regards to what we have chosen for you. Um, and hopefully, as agreed, we will speak again on such and such a date. Great. Okay, fab. So you have vast majority of it, of it in there. Um, did you use any bullet points? Uh, I didn't. I kind of, I, I very quickly kind of typed it up. But the bullet points were kind of more like... Um, yeah, oh, sorry, I didn't read that out. Um, we're hoping to maybe supply, as per our conversation, UK manufactured goods to your UK office. Um, as you mentioned with the wow factor, um, this was important and hopefully we can deliver. Yeah, products okay. to be uh, to be uh, eco-friendly, Yeah, as you yeah. mentioned that. Absolutely, so you've got some of my language in there, the wow factor, um, the local British British made the um, environmentally friendly or eco-friendly um, what other ones did you what other ones did you say um, you'd feel I also have that we will help your staff to feel more important and part of the team like you said some of the items will be for the new on the starters yes yes yeah fab so 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 that's that that's the nuts and bolts of it and just to make um i think the bullet point just kind of helps my exact words to stand out so they zone in on that to go yeah that's exactly what i said love it okay fabulous great job guys good job well done who wants to go next um i'll go i was with lana yep. so um, okay, so thank you for helping me get acquainted with your business. From our conversation, I understood the following. You want to be seen as innovative, creative and being kind to the planet. Um, help successfully launch your UK office with exciting items. Help your sales rep connect and make an impact with clients. Um, move towards sustainable notebooks and other items. Um, we look forward to helping you bring your company values to life and delivering the wow factor. Basically. Yeah, what do you think of that guy? Hey! Yeah! Brilliant! 
<laughs> Absolutely. You were listening to me. You got a lot of my words there. And that, how, how did that feel for you? Uh, I think we found it hard at the start, but actually Lana went on a, on a roll and was like throwing out all the phrases. She was great. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And just at the end to add in um, the, the next steps, right? As agreed, yeah. we'll follow up next, whatever. Yeah. Marty, good stuff, good stuff. Who wants to go next? Do you want to read ours, Trish? Yeah, you shared it, didn't you? So I did. Let me bear with I you. Did. pull it up here then. Okay. Now, hi, Kira. It was lovely chatting with you earlier. From our conversation, you seem to have a few needs that ASA can work together with you on. And then we have four bullet points. Uh, UK Office, a product to help you launch the company and create a wow factor with your clients and sourced in the UK in brackets. Uh, European Office, a water bottle for each team member to feel part of the team. Uh, notebooks for clients and the team all over Europe. Uh, other swag, items stand out from the competition. You mentioned that you wanted the products to reflect your innovative and creative side, and of course, being kind to the planet at the same time. I feel that ASA Brands aligns really well with your needs, and I have outlined some sustainable options that might work for you. And that's it. Excellent. Well Pretty done. Good, very good. Fabulous. It's very good. Fabulous. How did that feel for you, Patricia? Yeah, yeah. We worked well, didn't we, Caroline? Yeah. We used to we work did. together. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, I think the bullet points is definitely it kind of pulls in like yeah I felt it I felt it was it was something that yeah. we could easily adapt actually. Yeah. Well I, I like I've always remember like even like I've always said even with our quotes going out, I hate everything just bundled up into like one yeah. paragraph. I try to like break up like the descriptions that say into different paragraphs. Yeah. So just see see if it makes it easier. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a strong start to the proposal or to the quote because you're using my words and I feel you get me, right? Yeah. And now you're more advising me on what products is going to help me to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm more excited to open it up, right? Which is, which is, um, which is great, okay? Um, who's next? Alina, do you want to do our one? Uh, yeah, I, I can go, but I didn't really read. Uh, we did. We didn't write it down, did we? We just talk about it. <laughs> okay, you go. Whatever works. Uh, so I'll just go with like the the first one. So dear uh, dear Kira, from uh, our conversation, we understood that you would like uh, for the products to tell about your company that you are innovative uh, uh, and friendly to the planet, and that you would like to. Uh, uh, delivered gifts for your uh, colleagues, which will surprise them and be a, a little bit uh, as a wow effect. That and that you would like um, for the gifts to create a connection between your company and the and the clients, and that you would like us to uh, propose some ideas for the for the clients. Okay, excellent. So you had really good use of my words and the, the client's language in there. And so you you just finish it off with, you're going to follow up next week as agreed. We'll talk next week at whatever time. Well done. Listen, he all did mighty. <clears throat> That's really, really brilliant. And I hope that it, um, that it feels good for you. But the more you practice that, um, the sharper your listening skills are, the better questions you're asking will all help to, to really serve the client uh, more, but you know, really feel that you are aligned with them, that you are their partner. Um, and you know, you're the expert, you are the expert, and I really need you to, 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 to show the client that, right? And you're doing that by listening, by digesting, by understanding, and then proving and showing them that you really can help them. So. I think you've all done right. Three weeks, fabulous. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, so you can use personalizing the proposal then in the body of it. And again, it won't be for every proposal, but, you know, I shared some examples with you, you know, instead of A6 Eco Glued Perfect Bio Notebook, how we can help you build your brand at the trade show, right? And then you're suggesting that option, right? Okay. Um, and so th this, I, I love to do this, is to, to send 
a, a pen with um, with a contract, put it in the post, send a pen, hint, hint, sign the contract and send it back to me, right? But it's a great idea how it can help you can help your clients to get more signed contracts, okay? And then also just look, look at this, um, and, and most companies do this, the name of the, the quote is, let's say in, in you know, for, to help you find it, the number, the quotation number, whatever that might be. But, um, and it, this is like a first impression. So they're reading the, the email, which hopefully you have some of that lovely language in it. Um, but also before they click on this, they're reading this. So you could call that something different, right? Uh, you know, um, planet friendly um, or helping you connect with your clients. You, you could call it something like that also, something that they said was important, right? Um, because that's just another touch point, another thing where they're going, oh yeah, wow, that's it, you know? And that can really help to distinguish um, yourself, okay? So looking at creative packaging and delivering it. It's not every client that you will put something in the post to, but you know, when you're showcasing your products, you're putting your proposal in the post to them, they're physically receiving something tangible and it is a wow. If they feel like they're receiving, you know, something that they, they want their clients to feel when they receive it, then you can deliver a proposal like that for your, you know, for your bigger contracts, for your for your bigger stuff, right? Um, it can really make the um, make the wow factor, okay? Wow factor, mm -hmm. okay? And again, you're helping them to, you're making it easier for them to spend uh, money. So you're offering some um, suggested upgrades, which maybe they don't have the budget for that now, but I'll have that in a month's time, or there's another department that has that, okay? Clients aren't afraid to spend money, but they are afraid to waste it. And we want to find out what they want to achieve in, in, in working with you, okay? And a, a quick story for you, um, when I was in my venue finding days and working with uh, event organizers to find the right venue, I had my killer questions and um, you know I was going through all of them. And at the end of this particular client, it was a big insurance company in Ireland and they needed to put together a five-star event in six weeks time. It was fabulous business for 500 people. And I asked her, I said, look, is there anything that really would drive you mad about working with a hotel, right? And immediately, she didn't even have to think about it. Immediately, she said, squeaky doors. She says, I cannot stand squeaky doors, Kira. So I was kind of making a joke out of this and saying, oh, do you know, are you going around with your own can of oil, um, uh, oil in the doors? And she said, oh, she says, there's no excuse, no need for squeaky doors. And I put that in my, uh, so I was sending my information to the hotels asking for their quotation. And I put in, very important to the client, no squeaky doors. And when I received the proposals back from the hotels, nobody mentioned squeaky doors, right? And it may not be something that you think is important. And it might be something that you think is really small, but if they said it, and she made a point of it, then it was really important to them, right? And every hotel missed out on that opportunity of addressing squeaky doors because they all said, oh, sure, we don't have squeaky doors, you know? But they didn't make a point of it and they didn't address it in the quotation or in the proposal, right? So I had to put together my um, quotation for the client and, um, and this is what um, I, I included with it, a little can of oil right and um i branded it i put my own thing on it and she loved it you know it cost me five euro to do that and i put it in the in the post to her and you know i had i had a client for life but this is what um this is a, another hotel client of mine and they have a beautiful resort in the forest in belgium and we were doing a competition on the proposals and this is what the idea that one of the girls came up with she sent the proposal in a little bit of the bark of the tree right and it really said so much about you know their resort and how different it was and it was you know beautiful wow factor and of course really eco eco-friendly too so quick quick um uh, quick recap now i know we had big conversations today so we've gone over on time but there were very important conversations and i'm delighted that we had them so you want to ideally make it visual use some bullet points you want to send it in the format that they want. So the client might send you a spreadsheet in Excel and ask you to fill that in. 
Now, um, she's doing that for a reason, right? She has an internal system. Maybe she has to send that spreadsheet to some other decision makers. Maybe that's her way of organizing herself for her meeting. And that's the document that she's meeting, that she's bringing into this internal meeting where people are making a decision, right? And this happened to me all the time in my venue finding days. If somebody didn't fill in the sheet that I sent them to do, to, to, to fill in, and they just sent me their quotation from the system, that meant that I had to fill it in. So it took me an awful lot longer to create my reports. And what that's saying to the client is, well, if you're not gonna take the time to fill that in now before we're doing any work together, indirectly, you're send it, set, selling to, saying to them that it's gonna be extra work working with you. You're, you're not making my life easy. Already you're making my life hard, right? And that's not what you mean. Can I interrupt there, Kira? Just a very quick thing before we go. I, if you're referring to, I know I sent you a spreadsheet yesterday yeah. from the client. Yeah. Now, they sent that to me on the day I was breaking up for the Christmas holidays. They sent it to me at about two to half two in the day. Yeah. And they wanted a whole proposal the following morning. Yeah. And they also wanted that spreadsheet filled in. And yeah. we couldn't. We couldn't do it. And they that's fair enough. That a turnaround of that kind of that that time limit, and yeah. it's just not feasible one way. That's or another. absolutely fine, Patricia. But it brings up a very good example that that will happen. Clients will will do that, and if we can, because sometimes it just takes us a minute to 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 populate that. But if she has to do that for four or five other suppliers, then that's taken her extra time. Now, if you do it and it takes you a few minutes, um, then you know, she's loving you already. Do you know what I mean? And and so I'm just showing that as an example because it happens. And and if it's something that you can do, um, then it's 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 really helping her or him to sell you internally in that meeting, right? For them to feel more passion about you. Like, no, I really want to work with ASA. Because sometimes that could be the difference the only difference between choosing to work with you or not. Okay, so it was a brilliant example um, of what can genuinely, can genuinely happen. Okay, and I know some clients are ridiculous and they just demand everything and it just wasn't feasible. Okay, but it was a great example of what can happen, right? Because <clears throat> Seth God Godden, like you put a lot of time into your proposals. You can put hours into some of your proposals, right? And if the business isn't one, then it's a waste of, of time, right? And a lot of people will say to me, I don't have time to do this and to do that and to that, you know? But, you know, if we don't have time to do it, you know, right in the first place, we, we don't have time to do it twice. We definitely don't have time to do it twice, okay? And it's just it's just something to, to remember when sometimes it's the difference between winning and losing, okay? So folks, I'm going to ask you to reflect for a minute and what are you going to do different? What is your commitment from our workshop today as to, um, as to what you're taking from the last two hours of our life and what you're going to do, okay? And I just ask everybody to, to share one thing, okay? Do you need a minute to think about it? Or are you ready to go? I suppose for me it's kind of just asking those questions to kind of get more out of the conversation because a lot of the time like say if a call came into the office and they were just looking for notebooks and like 100 notebooks I'd be like grand okay no problem but like I wouldn't try to draw the customer further like what type like what they want to achieve like are they looking for a sustainable so I could go off and quote like five or six notebooks and then still miss the mark so I think getting mm -hmm. that conversation piece at the start yeah Fab. So that's one yeah. thing I need to apply yeah and then showing them in the proposal that you know you're you're more of that consultant you're suggesting you know and that yeah. they, they feel then that you're really taking care of them and you're that expert. Yeah. Good. Uh, for me, it's probably just going to be wording uh, wording emails differently. Okay. Great. As to more of that wording that we practiced. Yeah, just um, putting more of the conversation into it rather than me telling the person. This is this is what you're looking for. More, this is what you asked for, rather than this is what you're looking for. Yeah, 
so you're turning that around and that's a you know it's a, it's a it's a really big thing it's a simple thing but it's a really big thing to do that because they really feel that you get them right and it's not about you it's about them but okay thanks richard for me um and i i do tend to to pick up the phone anyway but definitely needing to ring everybody that you know not just assuming you know for that so for that limerick one for example we picked the bottles but i didn't talk to her and i don't know what did you talk to her alona but we should have talked to her so I need, i'm going to ring her after now <laughs> um but like it's taking that time to actually pick up the phone and like Bronya said get more information uh, because i i've done it with a few in the last two weeks um consciously and it definitely is is you know you do get more information um you know like i had one in, about a credit union and he was like i want stylus pens and i was like well why do you want stylus pens or who are you giving them to and then it turned out that he wanted stuff for the youth market and i was like well are they really want to want style you know stylus pens so i said well, what about a, a snap out for the phone and he was like oh yeah that's you know so it's there you go it's that type of thing that you just like Ronya said you just could be way off the mark suggesting something because that's what you think they want but it's not actually what they want and definitely personalizing the proposal and not just saying here you go and even just rewording the click here for quote yeah well, I hate emails full stop because I often misread them and if I misread them I I can only assume other people misread them as well and I'm not the best at um putting myself forward in an email I, I, I that's why I rather be on the phone and have a conversation and gather the information rather than I hate this back and forth back and forth back and forth yeah but obviously with ISO we have to have a paper trail so there has to be some kind of communication there via email so yeah yeah but and and you know a good way to word it to the client is I want to save us over and back on emails and adding another you know 10 emails to your to your list for the day we jump on a call we'll have it done in 20 minutes right mm -hmm. and that's an easy way to open up more conversations fab nice one he, he uh, had uh, using more killer questions to get more information regarding the product that they're looking for great so her sound isn't working yeah yeah great and th and that's fabulous Ilona. and you asked me some lovely killer questions as well in our practice well done um Lana, Carolina, Patricia, what's coming up for you? Well, I'm perfect as I am. <laughs> as far as my job concerns, I think I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you took from today's conversation, apart from that you're perfect? Well, you see, they don't really um, like concerns me because I don't talk to clients. I don't offer them anything. Okay. And I said I want I want it that way. I want to keep it that okay. way. Okay. <laughs> well, what what I took so is that wh when you were working with Gronya on that, you were obviously very actively listening because you were writing down my words and the phrases, and that really oh, helped put to together yes. <laughs> a proposal. So that was that was fabulous work. And I think Lana, if you're answering the phone, you know that's an opportunity as well to get more information before you pass on the messages to us as well. You know. You could so I'm trying to get as more information as I can, like yeah. uh, all of them. Yeah. Uh, but like, and I think now with the killer questions, it, you know, you potentially could get even more information out of them. Um, no, because, just because I don't want to be talking to two people now. You know, like they would give me information because they would think I'm a salesperson, and then I would say, oh, do you know what? Actually, I will ask one of our sales managers to to ring back to you, and then she has to she. Has but still you, you're the first impression so even if you ask just one killer question i want to make sure i brief on you properly can i ask you just one question okay um but you can have that internal conversation your, yourselves patricia what's coming up for you because i think um, it's brilliant work today well i suppose really it's more um how I can go about asking these killer questions because like I, most of as you know most of our work is done on email and um, I get an email my emails are normally very um, not casual but like 
I, you know, because they're from the, they're very small teams that I work with, you know. So I'm normally going back and saying hi, thanks for your email, you know. Um, just before I can go to quote, um, can you give me the the following information? And then I do have my bullet points, like you know, what's the event, what's the budget, you know, delivery is it individual addresses, one address, and it's all those kind of questions, you know, that way. Yeah. Um, if you can come back to me, then I can work on the quote, etc. So yeah. I still have to try and find out, like if somebody comes to me and they say they've got a 500 euro budget, they have an event in three weeks time, I have to f- try and myself and find out what killer questions I can ask. Yeah, and that will take- that, Because that, that, that's my difficulty and that's my problem I'm having a lot of because like, I, I work, I could work within a three to four week lead time yeah. and I'm trying to figure out where does the killer questions come in, you know, when, especially yeah. with all the other questions as well as in budget, branding, yeah. etc. The killer you know? questions come in before the budget and the branding. So, so go through the list. I, I advise you to go back through that document. Yeah, no, and, and that's fine. I suppose that my whole worry is can we meet the delivery date. I suppose that's that that that's the one thing that flashes up on my mind all the time when I see I've got a three week lead time and I haven't even got to quote. The yeah, thing that yeah. flashes up at me is can I can I make the delivery date? Yeah. And well, I think but I think in most cases, Trish, we can. I suppose what I what I'm wondering is maybe it's to pick up the phone and have a conversation. But the other question is are there ways that you can put those questions in an email that are, you know, what do you want the product to say about you might look funny in an email. It's yeah. more natural to say it. So are there specific questions that we could put that are bit better written down that you can get more information back from the client if you don't, if you aren't able to pick up the phone to them? But I think picking up the phone has yeah. to be our first port of call. But that's where I'm, that's where I'm, you know, like you, you wouldn't tend to to ask that in an email. What you want the products to say about your company? No, yeah. no, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but there's 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 no harm in saying that there is no harm in asking some of those killer questions because part of your job is to give them clarity to help mm. them get clarity because they may not have thought this through, they haven't had this conversation before, right? Mm. And so part of your job as the expert, as the person that can help them, is to help them think this through. And even asking one of those killer kind of questions, look, you know, what what do you want? How do you want them to feel when they receive this? You know, and they're like, God, actually, I never thought about that, you know, um, and there's no harm in asking something like that in email. But you said we always do business by email. Well, maybe you can change that up. You have the power to say, look, let's jump on a call because I have 10 questions or it's 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 going to save us over and back on, on an email. Maybe you don't want to be typing a big email and I can if we talk about this, it'll take 10 minutes. Right. And you're constantly just showing it back to the client how you're helping them, right? Save them time. You want to make their life easy, right? Because get clarity, yeah. you need to give yourself more time moving forward. You can't be keep on asking for things on on tight deadlines. Mm-hmm. Not they can't always do that, but you've got to like in an email, they're not going to get that information. So it's like a phone conversation is like stop it and with three week lead times. Yeah. Sometimes you have to educate the, the, the client also, right? Um, but but you're the expert. Um, but I advise you to go back over those three documents that are in the website, print them out and digest them, read through them and come up with your killer questions, right? Um, what is right and what's comfortable for you? Um, because you deal with some really big clients that have a massive budget, right? Mm. And we want to make sure that they feel their needs are served uh, the best. And they're not just coming to you with the 500 euro stuff and they're going to somebody else with the 20 grand stuff, right? That could be happening and you don't know it, right? And we want to make sure that's not happening, okay? And that's the danger when we make assumptions, okay? So fabulous work today, um, Patricia, well done. Carolina, I don't think you gave me something, did you? Well, I think... be um, similar to what Gronia and uh, Ilona said about uh, asking the more more right questions to try and like narrow down the 
the product selection yeah. I should offer to the clients, like not to waste time on like looking for something they they don't want or they don't need. Exactly. You could be eliminating a lot of the, the, the work and the research that mm -hmm. you need to do and you're just zoning in straight away and getting to the point quicker. Fabulous. Okay. I think you've all done really, really, um, really, really mighty. So um, the, next, uh, the next stage will be we need to create a, a proposal and a template. I know you have some of the work done with your new branding and your new um, presentation uh, template. Um, and I, I would suggest that you take a real inquiry and that you come up with, with some kind of a, a, a template that you can personalize and just um, pick, you know, add in the client's words here and there. So you're, you're not recreating the wheel constantly, right? And that could be a great project and, um, and, you know, maybe it's something that you, you have a chat with uh, Caroline and, uh, and Michelle um, about, okay? But I'm here for you guys and any questions, any stumbling blocks, just call me and I'm happy to have one-to-one -one time with you. Um, we will have another session. Um, I don't have a definite date. I'm chatting with Caroline and Michelle about that, but we will, um, we will let you know. I would dearly love to meet you all in person and seeing as I'm in Cork, maybe we could make something um, in person, uh, in person happen, but we, we'll, we'll see how that, how that goes. Um, thank you for your leap of faith in me over the last uh, three weeks for just going with it. I'm thrilled at, at, at seeing your, your thinking and, and how you're approaching um, uh, clients. And I, I thank you for, for all your hard work on that. Okay, folks. Thanks a million. Thank you. 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 Thank you.